G'day folks, welcome to Beginner's Collection Essentials Episode 3. I want to tell you I've had a pig of a time coming up with what this one should be. In fact, I've gone through and researched a number of things. It is so difficult coming up with really what I think is a good order of puzzles because everyone's going to have their different opinions. And I guess this is my order, this is my opinion. And um, so you might think, hey, what about that cube? Well, it's probably coming. So without further ado, let me introduce you to this cube. It is the Scube. That's right, the Scube. Now, the Scube was invented back in 1982 by Tony, no, not Tony Fisher, amazingly, by Tony Durham. Now, I had a look at Tony Durham. This is about the only thing he's done. So often I'll be saying to you, hey, look at all this other stuff that these people have done. But Tony Durham, nice work, Tony. You've spawned an entire generation of these things. And let me tell you more about that soon. Now, the Scube is a really interesting puzzle in that the standard Rubik's Cube has a six-arm core, and so you've got, you know, in terms of faces, you've got um, six faces, and each of those things rotates. Well, here we've got a four-arm core, and so what that means is the rotation turns out that when you're turning this thing, you're actually turning half the puzzle. So if I just start turning that, you can see that I can basically create a nice little symmetrical thing there. And I keep turning, and it's always one half of the puzzle that you're turning, no matter what you're doing, which is pretty bizarre. Now, I'm talking about the Scube, but I'm actually going to be talking about the Scube variants as well. And I'll tell you why. It's because, really, if you've seen one Scube, you've seen them all. Now, don't get me wrong with that. It's not like none of the rest are good. In fact, I'd say some of the rest are better than this Scube. It's just that they all turn in the same way. They are all based on the same mechanism, and they're all variants but they do have different kind of pieces. So all of them have eight corners and six other bits. So on this one, we can see the eight corners and six other bits. Why don't I just call them centers? Well, because on some of the others, they're not centers. And at this point, I'd like to introduce you to, for example, the kite cube. What? Is this really a cube? Yes, it is. And let's firstly look and see that when I turn that, it's half the puzzle that's turning. I'll turn that, it's half the puzzle that's turning. So this has exactly the same mechanism. Now on here, the corners are fairly easy to see. There they are. There's eight of them. But what? These are these centers. So I can't really call these other pieces centers. I'm going to call them other pieces. On this puzzle, they kind of look like corners as well, but they're kind of weird corners. So that's the kite scube. What about the scube ultimate? Well, again... Where are my corners? I've got corners here, 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 here. There's eight of them still. And then I've got these pieces, these large pieces. And again, you can see that turns half the puzzle. The large pieces here are not centers. They're not corners. What the heck are they? Well, I'll just call them edges. I don't know if they are or not, but that's what they are. What about this one? This is a fairly new one, the Scube Curvy Rhombohedron. Is this really a skew? Yep, there's half the puzzle being turned. Where are the corners? Well, in this one, that's a corner. That's a corner. That's a corner. No, it's not. It's a center. No, it's not. It's a corner. That's a corner. That's a corner. That's a corner, according to the skew mechanism. So these other pieces here, these bits, these big pieces, they are now functioning as that piece, as that piece, as that piece. As you can see why the scubes are so popular. It just starts getting incredibly bizarre. What is this? This is the scube extreme. This one was done by Tony Fisher. Okay, so in this case, where are my corners? Well, it's much easier to see the eight corners. There's four of them. There's the other four. It's not so easy to see the other pieces. In fact, these are centers like these ones, but because of the recessing to them, we've got all these different sticker colorings. This is just one of the scube extreme um, stickering schemes that you can get. So I've brought in a few of the scubes. These are the ones that I have. I'm actually getting another one, which is called the Holy Scube soon. That's a very sacred thing. And let's talk about this original scube. The thing that is so off-putting about this is initially you just expect it to turn like a cube and you go and do it. And I've seen people do this on countless occasions and they can't. They're going, what is this, some trick puzzle? And eventually they see that and the reaction is always the same. It goes something like this. Whoa, that's pretty much how it goes. And they can't work it out because they're used to a Rubik's Cube. Now, I said Tony Durham invented it, 
This was marketed in the same year. You Meffitt of Meffitt's Puzzles fame marketed it, but he didn't call it the Skew. He called it the Pyraminx Cube. Why? Well, in a Pyraminx, there are four axes of rotation. And this has four axes of rotation, so he wanted to put it in the same family as the Pyraminxes. So how did it get to become the Skew? Well, my understanding of the Skew, I think the name is Skewed Cube. That's where it would have come from. But I didn't make that up. This was back in July 1982. So all this happened pretty quickly. A man called Douglas Hofstadter. Some of you will know of his name. Um, he wrote a column. He's still alive, actually. He's about my parents' age, so he's pretty old. Uh, he wrote a column in Scientific American. And in that column, he suggested the name Skube. Hugh Meffitt knew a good thing when he saw it, and he grabbed that name and began marketing it later as the Skube. And all the other Skube variants have been called the Skube, not the Kite Pyraminx Cube. Okay. So, Douglas Hofstadter, what is another of his claims to fame? Well, my favourite one is Hofstadter's Law, and Hofstadter's Law says things always take longer than you expect them to take, even when you take into account Hofstadter's Law. Man, never a truer word has been spoken. Now, there are now 200 different skubes on the Twisty Puzzles forum with the skew mechanism. How many? 200. People have gone nuts. You can see some of these things have become mass-produced. There are a whole bunch of non-mass-produced. There's the Master Scube and even the Elite Scube as well. The Elite Scube is not mass-produced, but the Master Scube is. I'm not really calling the Master Scube in this little uh, family here because it is a different, uh, it's a higher order Scube, and I'm just talking about the first order Scubes, I guess. So at the moment, what can you get? Well, Mass produced, we've got the ones that I've shown you. We've also got a star like Skube, Skube Diamond, Squished Skube, that was a recent one from John Lynn. Um, the Methods 3D Skube, the Holy Skube, I mentioned that's coming. That's actually a Skube which has holes in it. The Skube Hex, and then of course the Skube Kite, the old Skube Ultimate, Skube Extreme, Skube Kirby, Rhombohedron. All of these are at Now Store. What's not at Now Store? This thing. In fact, this is quite hard to get. So I did say at the beginning of this series I'd only be doing it on puzzles that you can get. So why have I done it on the Skube? Well, no, I'm not breaking my rules. Well, actually I am. But uh, the point here is that because all of these things are essentially the same solve, even though they may not look like it, they're all actually Skubes. They're just different shape variants of the Skube. I don't really think this is necessarily the best Skube to get. That may be sacrilege to some people, but that's just my opinion. That's what I'm talking about. I probably would, if you were thinking about Skubes and you wanted one which was very unambiguous, you would either go for the Skube Ultimate or the Skube Kite. Both of these, the reason I say they're unambiguous is that each piece has a particular orientation and place and you can't get it in there wrongly oriented. What about this one? Ah, remember I said these. this was a corner? That means it is perfectly possible to place this thing wrongly oriented and not even know it. And so you come down to this situation where you might have this corner twisted and that's all that's wrong. Now you can't have one corner twisted on a skew. Yes, you can, because you can do it on this one. So it depends what kind of experience you're after. If you're after an experience, this is a big one, by the way. That's just a size comparison there. If you're after an experience with a big thing where you've got, uh, it feels chunky and weighty in your hands, which is what you want, then this may be the one to go for. This is probably, is this the heaviest one? It's probably the heaviest one that I've got. Um, if you're after an experience where you don't have any of these potential issues with um, pieces going in wrongly oriented and you can't tell, then you want to go for the Skube Kite or the Skube Ultimate. I actually think the Skube Kite and Skube Ultimate are easier to solve because of that fact, because of the orientation. If you want an original Skube, I think you can still get them, but uh, yeah, my understanding is you can't get them at now store at the moment, but you can get a whole bunch of other skubes. This one means, you again, these what I call other pieces, which in this case are centers, they could be wrongly twisted. Now you get over to here, and the centers here cannot be wrongly oriented. You can tell because you can place this center, but if you have that blue-orange little part over that side, then that has been twisted or flipped, and you can see it clearly. 
So I decided it was still worthwhile. There are a bunch of scubes you can currently get. I highly recommend them. This is a, a scube of some kind is a must have for any collection. And as far as a beginner's collection goes, I think it's fitting that uh, this is episode three and we've come across a scube. I do encourage you, if you don't have one, buy one. They're definitely fun puzzles. They do mess with your mind, particularly if you've never played with one before. There you have it, the scube. Hope you liked this video. Click like if you did, and thanks for watching.